Hello all, in this video we are going to discuss about system stability from the transfer function. So we have already done a video on impulse response, transfer function and pole zero plot. So in that I have explained the very basics of what is a transfer function, what is an impulse response and what are poles and zeros and how to plot the pole zero plot. So in this video we are going to see how to find the system stability or identify whether the system is stable or not from the transfer function. So what are actually stable system? Let's see that first. Okay. So I have explained that the impulse response is always a function of time. Okay. So let f of t be the impulse response of a system. So this is function of time that is t. So this f of t will tend to zero as the time tends to infinity. Then such a system is called a stable system. So this is the definition of stability that is as time tends to infinity if the system impulse response or the function tends to zero then such a system is said to be stable. Okay so if you plot the graph of this f of t versus t then you will get a graph like this. The system function will settle to zero as the time tends to infinity. So this is how a stable system will look like. Now what is an unstable system then? For a stable system f of t will tend to zero as t time tends to infinity and for an unstable system the f of t will also tend to infinity as t tends to infinity. So as t tends to infinity your f of t is also tending that is the function is also going to infinity means such a system is called a unstable system. Okay, so an unstable system and the graph will look like this. Okay, so the f of t is also moving to infinity value as the time is tending to infinity. Okay, so this is the graph of a unstable system. So there are two type of systems. Stable systems and unstable system. And there are also a third type of system which is called a marginally stable system. So, we have discussed about stable case and unstable case. Now, what is the marginally stable case? So, here both these conditions are not satisfied. So, it is not tending to zero and it is not tending to infinity also. That is, f of t is not going to 0 and also f of t not going to infinity as time is tending to infinity. So such a case is called a marginally stable case. So here what will happen is it will it will lay on to some constant value. So here the f of t will be uh, will be at stabilized at some values not at 0 but at some values here just like a constant. So initially there will be sudden variations but after some time that is as t is tending to infinity it will settle on to some values. So that is the impulse response function of the graph of a marginally stable case. So these are the three cases importantly we have to consider where we are going for the stability of a system. So first is the important one which is a stable case that is f of t should tend to zero as the time is going as infinity. So the graph will settle down to zero. But in the case of an unstable system, the function f of t, that is impulse response, is not tending to zero, but it is going to infinity as the time is tending to infinity. Now, in the case of a marginally stable system, what is happening is it is not obeying this case and this case. That is, f of t is not going to zero and not going to infinity. It is just settling at some values as time is tending to infinity. So, these are the th three cases we have to take in considera consideration while we are going for the system stability. Now, let us analyze the transfer function and try to identify whether the system is stable or not. I have taken a simple transfer function here, which is d of s equal to 1 by s plus b. So, this uh, is a Laplace transform. So, uh, I have already explained that the transfer functions will be either function of, uh, is a transform or Laplace transform. Okay, so from this, the impulse response will be the inverse Laplace L inverse of g of s that is equal to g of t and it is equal to e raised to minus bt right. 
So this is the impulse response of the system, right? Now, from this G of S, what is the poles and what are the zeros? So here there are no zeros because there is no numerator. The numerator value is one. Okay. So what is what are the poles? S plus B. So in order to find the poles, we need to equate the denominator to zero, or we have to find the roots of the denominator. So here S plus B equal to zero and S equal to minus B. So this is the this is the pole of this transfer function. Okay. So we have obtained that the transfer function which is given is 1 by s plus b. The impulse response is a raised to minus bt and the pole value is s equal to minus b. Right. Okay. So let's see whether this system is stable. So for that we are going to give values for b. So since b is the pole we are going to value give values for b as first b is greater than 0 then b equal to 0 and then b less than 0. So when the value of b is greater than 0 so the function g of t will be equal to e raised to minus b of t same as that because here b is greater than 0 okay and the function will look like this so this is your g of t and this is the t and this is the function when our b value is greater than 0 right now when b equal to 0 so this is the graph right now uh, when b equal to 0 that is the g of t equal to e raised to minus 0 into t that is equal to e raised to 0 which is equal to 1 so right so when you put b as 0 this value will be e raised to 0 and that value equal to 1 so your g of t is at the point 1 and this is your t so this is your graph when your b value equal to 0. Now what is the case when b value is less than 0? Now your g of t equal to e raised to minus of minus b into t. That is e raised to minus of minus is plus. So e raised to plus b t. And your graph will look like this. So this is your g of t graph as t tends to infinity it is going to infinity so this is your graph for both the three cases so for the first case when b is less than 0 that is sorry when b is greater than 0 your graph is like this when b equal to 0 your graph is at 1 your b when b is less than 0 your graph is going to infinity so from the earlier cases of the function stability graphs what can you identify so this graph is obviously the graph of a stable system so you can write it as stable now this is not stable not unstable so we have already discussed this case also that is called the marginally stable case so you can write it as marginally stable now for g of t that is for b less than 0 g of t graph is going to infinity so it is clearly unstable okay so we have obtained that this is stable this is marginally stable and this is unstable so from the three cases which one is stable so this is the stable case so the stable case is when for this system when the b value is greater than zero right so we have obtained that when your b value is greater than zero your function that is g of t or the impulse response is stable Okay, I'll remove uh, these two cases to make the stable case less more clear. Okay, so when your b is greater than 0, what is your function? Your g of t is equal to e raised to minus bt itself, right? So when b is greater than 0, your g of t equal to e raised to minus bt itself. And what will be your transfer function, which is the Laplace transform equal to or g of s equal to 1 by s plus b. So this is your transfer function. And from this, what is your pole value here? So your pole is 1 by, okay, pole is equal to s plus b equal to 0 or s equal to minus b. Right. That is, when b is greater than 0, the impulse response is 
for this case is a raised to minus b t itself and your transfer function is 1 by s plus b and your pole value is s equal to minus b or in reverse case you can say when your pole is negative that is s equal to minus b your system is stable okay so from this case that is we are using a very simple transfer function here so we could identify that when your pole value is negative your system graph will be stable or your system is stable so this is the case for stability that is when your poles are negative that is it is happening or it is occurring in the negative half plane of your graph then your system is stable so this is the case for stability of a system so the stability can be understood from identifying the poles of the system and if the poles are negative then the system is said to be stable let us try to figure out the case of unstable system also okay so for unstable system we have said that your b value should be less than zero right so the b value is less than zero so your system function will be e raised to plus bt here and your g of s will be 1 by s minus b and your s minus b tends to 0 and your pole value is plus b right so this is the case for a unstable system that is when your pole is positive what will happen just go in the reverse direction and you can identify that the system is unstable okay so when your b is okay so let's forget about the b when your pole is negative means your system is stable i really hope you understood what is stability and how you can identify the stability from the poles of the transfer function and if you uh, found this video useful please do share this video with your friends and family and also do subscribe to the channel thank you and also keep on watching